Welcome to our channel. In this video we will review facts about different types of ghosts. But before we start, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Every country on the planet has its own own form of ghost. You could even call it a shared cultural trait among people from all around the world. They differ in many ways, with some civilizations having quite similar forms of ghosts. Others, on the other hand, are whole distinct beings. Today, learn about 30 various sorts of ghosts from throughout the world. Boot. Boot, also known as Bhuta, is a form of ghost that originated in Indian culture and is similar to classic Western ghosts. The lingering spirit of a deceased person, retained in the world of the living for one cause or another. The cause for the Boot's prolonged presence varies from place to region, as does the story. The manner of their deaths, lingering regrets, or even the failure of the living to execute conventional burial ceremonies are all common explanations. A boot normally appears to be alive, despite the fact that they have the capacity to take animal shape. However, despite of their look, a boot's feet always face backward, revealing their true nature. They also do not cast shadows and will avoid approaching sacred sites at all costs. They may also wear all white and talk in a nasal tone on occasion. Doppelganger. Doppelgangers are a form of ghost from northern Europe who are said to mirror the look of a person. People who meet their doppelgangers frequently have extraordinarily poor luck, which usually ends in death. While doppelgangers are primarily connected with German folklore, they appear in cultures all across the world. In Irish tradition, for example, a similar form of ghost is known as a fetch. There are even remedies in Philippine folklore to ward against the bad luck that a doppelganger brings. These include removing your garments immediately turning them inside out, and then re-putting them on. Another option is to immediately return home and take a bath to wash away the bad luck. A person who sees the doppelganger of another individual can also ward off bad luck by smacking the real person in the face. However, not all doppelgangers are bad luck. For example, the ancient Egyptians believed that everyone had a spirit duplicate, a car, who passed on a person's memories and emotions to the afterlife. Dibbuk. It is a form of ghost from Jewish folklore that usually involves the soul of a deceased person who remains in the world because of previous regrets. Dibbuks try to possess the living in order to act on their regrets, which makes them morally ambiguous. Some Dibbuks become overtly evil, possessing individuals in order to exact vengeance for previous slights. Other Dibbuks have beneficent intentions, and some Jewish mystics have even allowed themselves to be possessed by them. Typically, no religious rites are done to allow these ghosts to pass on. Regardless of motive, all Dibbiks tend to pass on once they complete their goals. However, because their intentions do not always produce great consequences, Jews use exorcism ceremonies to free themselves of malignant Dibbiks. The Phantom Ship. This form of ghost, often known as phantom ships, typically depicts an unreal vessel that may or may not have its own crew. They frequently arise during bad weather and are associated with bad luck. The Flying Dutchman, a phantom ship, is the most renowned example of this type of ghost. The Flying Dutchman met its demise when sailing past the Cape of Good Hope during a storm, according to folklore. The captain was frequently requested by the ship's crew to proceed to the nearest port, but he refused. He also vowed an oath to cruise the seas indefinitely if he couldn't beat the storm without stopping in a port. This, in turn, resulted in the ship's curse, with everybody who saw it suffering from terrible luck. According to one narrative from 1881, then Prince George, later King George V, saw the Flying Dutchman off the coast of Australia. The ship's watchman perished the night after the sighting when he fell from his post atop the ship's mast and collided with the ship's deck. Ginganga. It is a Scandinavian ghost that describes the restless spirit of a deceased person who attempts to draw other people into the grave with it. Their reasons for being restless differ. The souls of the killer or their victims are usually involved in Gingangere. Other Gingangere are persons who died with profound and lifelong regrets. Gingangere, unlike other varieties of ghosts, appear fully human, with nothing indicating their supernatural existence. Because they can't be distinguished from the living, they're extremely dangerous. In truth, Scandinavian mythology is more concerned with preventing the dead from becoming Gingangere. People who are buried according to Christian burial practices do not usually return as Gingangere. Otherwise, Scandinavians used to build burial monuments called varps out of stones and twigs in sites where people died in unexpected ways. Passersby would then drop twigs on a varp whenever they saw one, appeasing the dead. Failure to do so risks prompting a ginganga to pursue them. Ifrit. 
This form of ghost is seen in Islamic folklore and is also known as Efrit, Afrit, and Afrit. They are likewise uncertain in nature, with some accounts characterizing them as demons from hell and others as restless souls of the dead. In any case, they're characterized as having malicious personalities and bodies made of fire and smoke. Having said that, they are sometimes depicted as being capable of carrying out God's plan, usually through avenging past wrongs. According to Islamic tradition, the Ifrit is not intrinsically bad and may even serve a noble purpose. According to one narrative from northern Iraq, Muhammad delivers an imprisoned Ifrit to his cousin, Ali. Ali eventually releases the Ifrit on the condition that it submit to God's will. Jiangxi. They're also known as the Chinese vampire, and they've gained worldwide acclaim thanks to Hong Kong films since the late 20th century. They take the form of reanimated corpses that hop around and attack people. They may also have greenish skin due to the rotting of their dead bodies. Jiangxi, unlike Western vampires, do not consume blood but instead drain their victims' chi, or life power, by contact. Jiangxi is said to form when a dead person's soul remains stuck in its body. As a result, exercising the Jiangxi usually consists of merely destroying its body, usually with fire. As a result, the spirit is free to proceed to the afterlife. Krahung. The male Krahung, a Thai ghost, forms a couple with the female Krasu. The Krahung is generally seen at night as a shirtless man flying around on a pair of rice baskets. It does so in order to locate persons traveling alone, whom the Krahung then attacks. During the day, however, the Krahung disguises itself as a regular person. The narrative of the Krahung is based on traditional oral Thai folklore. Scholars point out that it has a modern name. In recent years, the legend has also been used frequently in Thai media. For example, after a spate of nighttime attacks on women in rural areas of northern Thailand in 2012, villagers accused a Krahung. Authorities did not apprehend the culprit, a local drug user, until much later. Similarly, there were reported sightings of Krahangs in northern Thailand in 2017. This prompted a local elder to perform traditional exorcism ceremonies, which allegedly failed to drive the Krahung away. Krasu. The Krasu is the female counterpart to the Krahan, but she is even more malicious in contrast. For one thing, the Krasu has a far more hideous aspect, resembling a woman's head with all of her internal organs trailing beneath it from the neck down. According to Thai folklore, becoming Krasu is a type of afterlife punishment for immoral women. They are always hungry, therefore the ghosts go out at night hunting for livestock or poultry to eat. If it cannot obtain cattle or poultry, the Krasu will consume feces. The Krasu disguises itself as a woman during the day before reverting to a monster at night. It accomplishes this by pulling its head off and removing its organs from its body, which it then hides. A Krasu must return to its body before daylight or perish in pain. Similarly, if the body is discovered and burned, the Krasu will perish before morning. The Red Lady. This sort of ghost, often known as a Red Lady, manifests as the restless soul of a scorned lady or perhaps a slain prostitute. Even though they haunt historic hotels, theaters, and other comparable locations, most Red Ladies are amiable in comparison to other ghosts. They may also appear vain, frequently flaunting themselves in front of the living in the hopes of winning praise and capturing their attention. Their appearance, that of attractive women in red dresses, reflects this. Having said that, certain red ladies have a darker reputation, albeit they still avoid harming the living. A crimson lady, for example, haunts the first Ontario concert hall in Ontario, Canada, and walks around crying blood. Similarly, a red lady haunting Ireland's Leap Castle carries a dagger. The Llorona. La Llorona, one of the most well-known forms of ghosts in the world, has its origins in Mexican folklore. According to tradition, a woman marries a wealthy man and has two children with him. However, one day she finds him with another lady and responds angrily by drowning her children. She then realizes what she's done and, regrettably, drowns herself in her turn. As punishment for killing her children, she is barred from the afterlife and doomed to travel the earth in vain in search of her offspring. While the contemporary form of La Llorona constitutes a component of Mexico's post-colonial culture, scholars have observed similar oral traditions predating the Spanish conquest. They specifically mention one tradition that claims a ghostly woman roamed the streets of Tenochtitlan right before the Spanish conquest. She allegedly grieved while saying, My children, we are ready to leave, anticipating the tragic end of the Aztec Empire. Other academics have proposed that La Llorona was a metaphor for La Malinche, a native woman who assisted Cortés in conquering Mexico. May Nax. 
It is a female ghost from Thailand, also known as Mei Nak Phra Kanong and Nang Nak. The tradition of the ghost is said to have occurred in the late 19th century, during the reign of King Rama IV. A man named Mak once married a woman named Nak and got her pregnant, according to mythology. Mak joined the army and went off to fight in the Kengdung Wars against Burma before she could give birth. In his absence, Nak gave birth, but she perished along with her kid before Mak could return. On his return, however, he saw his wife and child waiting for him, with Mak only afterwards learning their true identity as ghosts. Terrified, he retreated to a temple that Nak was unable to approach. Nak retaliated by frightening the locals until she was imprisoned in a jar and thrown into the sea by an exorcist. Nak was eventually able to escape after a fisherman mistakenly took the jar from the sea and opened it. In May Nak's memory, a shrine survives in Bangkok today, in the hopes of appeasing the ghost and finally allowing her to pass on. Mananangal. The Mananagal, a species of creature from the Philippines, is also one of the most iconic figures in Philippine mythology. While not precisely a ghost, the Mananangal possesses haunting features. It takes the form of a lady during the day, but at night, it divides her body from the waist up to fly utilizing bat-like wings. The Mananangal then goes in search of pregnant women in order to consume the fetuses inside their bellies. It achieves this with its large, fanged tongue. The Mananangal sucks the fetus out through a small incision made by the teeth in the woman's tummy. According to the folklore, while the Mananangal is immune to injury at night, its abandoned lower body is not. The Mananangal is killed by sprinkling salt and garlic on its waist. When the sun rises, the Mananangal is rendered impotent since it lacks the ability to return to its human shape. Takian, Nang. A Nang Takian is another type of Thai ghost that haunts and protects Ta Kian trees. Most people have little to fear from a Nang Takian, but it will become hostile if its tree is defiled. People who live in houses made of Ta Kian wood may also experience bad luck or other supernatural phenomena as a result of a vengeful Nang Takian. However, occasional exceptions are made, such as in the case of Buddhist monks. Tarkian wood is widely used to construct Buddhist monasteries, which Nang Takian regards as a meritorious sacrifice. Even Buddhist monks must perform particular rites to pacify any Nang Takian guarding Tarkian trees intended for use in their temples. Tani Nang. A Nang Tani, another sort of Thai ghost, is quite similar to a Nang Takian. In reality, the only distinction between them is the tree they guard. The Nang Tani preserves wild banana trees. This species of banana tree produces inedible fruit, which helps keep people away. However, the leaves of wild banana trees are used in traditional Thai medicine and for wrapping traditional Thai sweets. As a result, several customs are developed to please a Nang Tani when harvesting the tree's leaves. These practices typically include bringing the ghost presents such as flowers, incense, and even sweets. Other traditions include covering the trees in satin linen. Onyu. This is a Japanese ghost that is the spirit of a woman who died with intense hatred. They remain in the living world to avenge previous wrongs. They do so, however, with great violence. Sadako Yamamura from the Ring franchise is a well-known example of this type of ghost in modern media. She has the Onryu's indiscriminate tendency to attack and murder anybody who comes into contact with her curse. Even Sadako's power, however, pales in contrast to that of rare male Onyu, who are usually born of royal lineage. One is Prince Sawara, who lived in the 8th or 9th centuries AD and held a vendetta against Emperor Kanmu. His rage caused a slew of natural calamities, including droughts, earthquakes, and typhoons. It only stopped when Emperor Kanmu shared the title of emperor with his brother posthumously. Even so, Emperor Kanmu took the precautionary measure of shifting the capital from Nagaoka to Kyoto. He did this in case his appeasement of Prince Sawara was insufficient and caused other catastrophic disasters. Penangalan. It is a Malaysian ghost with many parallels to ghosts from other cultures. These include the Thai Krasu, with the Penangalan having a similar appearance. The Penangalan is similar to the Mananangal from the Philippines in that it hunts pregnant women to feed on their unborn children. However, the Penangalan has special characteristics of its own. The Penangalan, unlike its Thai or Philippine cousins, does not separate from its body at night. It merely changes from its human form to its ghostly form. The ghostly status of the Penangalan is likewise uncertain, at least in a Western perspective, because they are not entirely spiritual entities. This is because Penangalan is said to have started when witches gained the ability to transform while soaking in vinegar. Phi Am. 
A Phi Am, a form of Thai ghost, is known for sitting on people's chests while they sleep. This permits them to immobilize their victims while also giving them nightmares. The paralysis, in particular, prevents them from waking up or gaining the attention of someone who could assist them. As a result, the word was used as a synonym for sleeping paralysis by the Thai medical community. Sleeping paralysis, like the ghost it is named after, is characterized by nightmares that are so terrifying that the body cannot move. This can be fatal since the person loses their ability to breathe. Phong Phi. It's a Thai ghost, also known as Phi Phao, that lives in the country's northern provinces. A Phi Fongkano, like many Thai ghosts, disguises itself as a regular person throughout the day before revealing its true ghostly self at night. A Phi Fong spends the night searching for food, such as frogs and fish. It may also consume dead bodies, excrement, and even placentas. This type of ghost usually avoids people, but it will avenge itself on those who upset it. This usually entails the Phi Fong hurling banana stalks at their house, which brings them ill luck. However, a Phi Fong has an unexpected weakness, someone recognizing and labeling it a ghost when in human form. A Phi Fong, on the other hand, can transform other individuals into more of its kind by merely spitting on them. Pop Phi this is a type of female ghost with a cannibalistic reputation in Thailand, commonly known as Pop. This species of ghost, according to tradition, was created when an old prince used magic to transfer his soul to an animal. A servant impersonated the prince in order to steal his body, only for the prince to inform his wife of their servant's treachery. The servant's body was then destroyed by the princess, while the prince fooled the servant into leaving his body. The servant's spirit departed transforming into a cannibalistic creature that eats guts to survive. It eventually found a new host in the form of a witch, with Phi Pop leaving every night to feed. In 2007, approximately 1,000 individuals in northern Thailand had two women exercised as purported hosts to Phi Pop, which drew international attention. In 2012, 10 of those folks died abruptly in what their neighbors characterized as ghost retribution. Thai Hong Phi Another form of Thai ghost, a Phi Thai Hong, is the restless and resentful spirit of a person who died violently. This causes them to strike out viciously against whatever living thing they come across, hoping to alleviate their own pain by causing the pain and death of others. People in Thailand, according to this belief, avoid sites where someone died brutally for at least a week after their death. This, according to legend, allows the souls of the dead to calm down and maybe move on. Thai legend also describes a Phi Thai Hong version known as Thai Thong Klom. The latter occurs when a woman and her kid both die during childbirth. Because of the repeated deaths, this variation of the ghost has a more violent and even more devastating curse. In an unexpected twist, one Thai Thong Klom tradition has the Dutch East India Company purposely murdering pregnant women while building fortifications in the region. Because the women died for a good cause, their spirits lingered as protective rather than vindictive ghosts. Ponchanak. This is a form of ghost shared by Indonesian, Malaysian, and Singaporean cultures. It is also known as Kuntilanak. It is the result of a woman dying in labor with her kid, with the spirit taking on her appearance. The ghost is driven insane by the circumstances of its death, with the spirit utilizing its appearance to entice men to their deaths, generally by eating their innards. This sort of ghost is also associated with the Indonesian city of Ponchanak, owing to their presence at the city's establishment. However, the first sultan of Ponchanak, Sayarif Abdurrahman al Qadri, defeated and expelled all ghosts. Nonetheless, some portions of the city are reported to be haunted by spirits. The city has a tradition of having wood cannons fire volleys at regular times. The volleys serve as a type of salute in memory of the sultan, as well as a means of scaring away the ghosts. Preta. It is a type of ghost seen in all South and East Asian civilizations, and is translated as hungry ghost in English. This stems from its Buddhist and Hindu theological foundations, with preachers alluding to spirits caught between death and reincarnation in a new existence. This is primarily due to the failure of the living to undertake adequate burial ceremonies for the dead. If the ceremonies are not carried out within a year after the person's death, their spirit remains a preta for the rest of eternity. Other criteria, however, exist for a person's soul to become a preta after death. Only greedy and deceitful people usually become preters after death, reflecting their karma. Traditionally, this motivates preters to consume corpses or feces, but current sources report preters craving other things as well. In any case, this is the origin of their moniker, which means hungry ghost. Revenant. 
Revenants are a form of ghost that is common in European folklore. They are reanimated corpses. They differ, though, based on the folklore of the various European countries. In Scandinavia, for example, revenants have defensive properties such as defending burial places from tomb thieves. Various folk legends in medieval England feature revenants rising from their graves for various reasons. For example, one revenant awoke to seek vengeance for his wife's infidelity, with the haunting only stopping when the locals dug up and burned his remains during the day. Another revenant arose in another story as a result of its unwillingness to leave its wife behind. Only until a bishop wrote an absolution for his sins and placed it on the revenant's tomb did he rest in peace. Shade. Shades were first mentioned in the Old Testament's Book of Samuel, making them one of the world's oldest types of ghosts. Scholars have traced the term's origins back to popular ideas about the destinies of the deceased in the ancient Near East. It is particularly related to the popular idea in an underworld where the dead live in continuous shadow. This was later passed down to ancient Greece, where it was reworked in the Orpheus myth. In the myth, Orpheus goes into the underworld in search of his late wife. He discovers the deceased reduced to ethereal shadows or genuine shades of their living selves there. This established the basis for the popular Western concept of ghosts having translucent and ethereal appearances when they were still alive. Strigoi. Strigoi, a type of ghost from Romanian folklore, is one of the vampire's source materials. Strigoi, in particular, are reanimated dead who want to drink the blood of the living in order to prevent perpetual death. However, because they have already died, their bodies decompose regardless of whether they are reanimated or not. This gives Strigoi the grotesque look of walking corpses. They allegedly have shape-shifting skills and can even become completely invisible to hide their terrible features. Romanian tradition also explains why a deceased person can become a Strigoi. Living a sinful life, being cursed by a witch, being killed for perjury, or committing suicide are examples of these. One strange rationale even concerns being the seventh kid of the same sex born to the same parents. The Strigoi story is also the source of one of the most common vampire killing methods. Driving a stake through the heart, in particular. Tiyanak. The Tiyanak, a form of vampiric entity that haunts individuals in the Philippines, has two origin myths, depending on the historical setting. According to pre-colonial legends, the Tiyanak are unborn children whose mothers perished before they could give birth. However, traditions dating back to the colonial period indicate that the Tiyanak are the souls of children who died before being baptized. Regardless of their origin, the Tiyanak's spirits are said to resemble a child's weeping in order to entice the unwary into the jungle. The Tiyanak are often described in the legends as having childlike traits. They have claws and teeth that they employ to murder their prey. Having said that, the legends also describe numerous strategies to deal with the ghosts. One includes the victim removing their clothes, pulling them inside out, and then re-putting them on. This amuses the Tiyanak, who then releases the victim. Rosaries and other holy items, as well as garlic, repel the Tiyanak. Baptismal rites are also said to have an effect on Tiyanak, relieving them of their restlessness and directing them to the afterlife. Vampire the modern vampire's basic origin, this type of ghostly entity, has its origins in Slavic culture. In reality, every Slavic country, from Serbia in the south to Russia in the north, and from Poland in the west to Ukraine in the east, has its own version of the vampire. Vampire, like the Romanian Strigoi, are reanimated dead who seek the blood of the living. They must do so to escape permanent death, although unlike Strigoi, vampire bodies do not decay, allowing them to pass for the living more easily. Having saying that, their bodies do reflect their abnormal nature, such as pale, sickly skin and a lack of a heartbeat. They may also have magical abilities, reflecting the widely held notion that witches and heretics become vampire after death. To prevent this, people in Slavic countries have customarily beheaded the corpses of those who were condemned or suspected of witchcraft or heresy in life. This ritual was later adopted by neighboring Germany, which helped to spread the vampire tradition throughout Western Europe. It rose to prominence as the vampire, particularly in Bram Stoker's novel Dracula. Despite his savagery and bloodlust, Dracula's inspiration, Vlad Tepes III of Wallachia, had no historical ties to the vampire. Vrykola Cass. The Vrykola Cass, a sort of ghost from Greece, is quite similar to the vampire. People who died excommunicated by the church, as well as those who are buried in unconsecrated ground, may become Vrykola Cass after death. Sinners in general, as well as those who consume wolf or werewolf meat, may become vrykolakas. 
Werewolves may also become vrykolakas after being killed if their bodies are not quickly burned. The bodies of vrykolakas do not decay, instead transforming into huge, drum-bodied, red-skinned creatures. The vrykolakas, unlike the vampire, does not suck blood. Instead, they pull out and consume the liver, as well as other internal organs. They may also carry plagues with them everywhere they go and only get stronger as they age. This makes killing them and destroying their bodies critical for every community that claims to be haunted by them. The White Lady. This form of ghost, sometimes known as a lady in white, shares many characteristics with the lady in red. For one thing, they're well known around the world, with numerous sightings in countries and cultures all over the world. Another thing they have in common is that they both came from families of women who died brutal and untimely ends. They do, however, have differences. A lady in white, obviously, dresses in white. A lady in white, unlike a lady in red, is usually unfriendly. A lady in white will aggressively seek to drive their victims into catastrophe, usually wrecking their lives before they die. Some variants of the white lady, such as the Russian Zion, even seduce men before bringing them beneath the earth. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel, since we will be covering a lot of similar content in the future. Till next time, stay curious.